As you may recall, I recently bought an ancient piece of computer junk an Apple Mac Pro 1.1 from 2006 in not the best condition and with not the best specifications. The main reason for buying it was to see what a 16 years old computer is capable of in modern times. And today we're going to fix it up and give it a slight upgrade. Last time we had upgraded, we added a riser card, installed 16 MB of memory in 4 channels and equipped it in the modern 2018 era GPU. But the CPUs remained stock, which as I remind you are two CPUs with two cores, very old 771 socket, and if you watched my previous video then you remember that the CPUs were the bottleneck. Today I bought two new old processors for this computer that in theory should breath the new life in this old piece of scrap metal. These are not the Xeons I wanted, but they are still more powerful than the ones that were here before. They cost me only 300 hryvnias, by the way. The first thing to do is to check the functionality of them, just in case I was sold the non-working CPUs. You can't imagine how I struggled breaking the screws on the radiator with a screwdriver for disassembling phones. I was too lazy to buy an appropriate screwdrivers, so I had to unscrew them with this one, holding it at a big angle and at even bigger angles I held pliers with which I held this screwdriver. Look what happened to it after such loads that were not typical for it. Next things went better, the radiators were not that tight on the CPUs and taking them off it became clear that the thermal paste had dried out back in 2010. Hmm, I can say that it's like starch and taste. By the way, despite the dry thermal paste, the CPUs didn't overheat. There was so much dust here that it should be cleaned 7 years ago. Here is the socket and here is the socket, so where is it? I got lost here, let's help the thief find socket too. Oh, there is it, this time we managed again. And now we will change them for these two 4 core Xeons E5335. Yes, they are far from the most powerful stones for this socket, considering that they are only 2 GHz per core, but on the other hand there are two more cores and the amount of cash has also increased exactly twofold. Someone may ask, why did you buy such a crappy CPU? First of all, AliExpress doesn't work in Ukraine now, and that's where you could buy a two top of the line Xeons for this mark. So I had to look for them on our flea market. Secondly, there is not a large assortment, so you can't complain that the prices here are high or something like that, we simply don't have them. I haven't gone out of the online stores for a week waiting for someone to put something similar on sale, but only these were found. This funny adapter for 775 socket will not be useful for us, because we have a real 771 socket. People are making these adapters, and then you have to struggle to take them off. My goodness, how much dust is here, I almost suffocated from such a large amount of it. First CPU is in position, now the second Xeon, the top socket is harder to open than the first one. Done. Now I will apply a little thermal paste on both CPUs, perhaps for the first time in 16 years it's been changed here. I almost forgot our previous hardened thermal paste is still on the radiators, so now we need to clean them. For this I will use a blade. Done. But not finished yet. Alcohol is needed. I slightly scratched the base of the tower with the blade, but I think there will be no harm from these scratches. Now they look like new. I won't screw them in, I will just put them on the top for now. We still need to check the processor's performance. The thing is, when I found the ad of the sale of these Xeon CPUs, they were sold for 250 hryvnias each. And I wrote to the guys selling these Xeons, let's make a deal, 2 for 250. He wrote back to me, let's make it 300 for 2. I agreed to such a deal, but now I think, what if I made mistake and the Xeons are not working, because one of them has a darkening as it was trying to run at 6 GHz. Well, now I will connect everything and we will check. To be honest, it's scary. The moment of truth, we have a contact. The CPUs are working, two processors at 2 GHz quad-core Intel Xeons. They are working and that's good. But I can't sleep peacefully because of the external appearance and the abundance of dust in the middle of the case of this elderly supercomputer. That's why I decided to finally solve this problem and now I, like a Cinderella, will clean it from the dust. I will not try too hard. 
Of course, there was a lot of dust near the power supply on the DVD drive and on the fans as usual. I didn't want to put a lot of efforts, but then when I got into the task I couldn't stop and even cleaned the power supply. I didn't tell you, but this Mac has its own little speaker, or rather a very powerful speaker, depending on how you look at it. And finally, I left two radiators, probably the most important thing that needed to be cleaned in this computer, as they were extremely clogged with the dust here. So do you like watching me work here? Come on, admit it. The radiators also look like new. Now as for the case itself and its torn mounting. This is what holds the case of our mark together. It's something like a removable fastener or a bolt fastener, I don't know exactly. There are even fixators on the bolts. In any case, they broke off here. They inserted into the holes in the case and hold the aluminum plate from the inside. That is, the case is completely removable here without a single screw on the outside. Just look at this. Wow, Apple engineers really went all out. In any case, these need to be replaced with something similar. To do this, we need to remove the board from the case since there are rumors that aluminum shavings conduct electricity well. First of all, all cables must to be disconnected from the board. I don't know which one is responsible for what I can only guess. Well, this blue one is obvious that it is for the DVD drive. Some of them are labeled, for example this one is for the hard drive. This big one above which I was struggling with for a long time is the general SATA cable for all the drives. The board is attached to the case with 8 screws after unscrewing them. You still won't be able to easily remove the board from the case. It took me a while to figure out that I needed to remove the front panel with the ports and power button, but that wasn't enough and I had also to remove the black anaconda from the case, which wasn't as easy as I thought it would be. As a result, my camera died, its battery drains quickly. I wonder why my camera manufacturers haven't thought of using a belt-fed system for battery supply. It would have saved me so much time. But that's not all. It turns out that I also need to remove the ventilation grill and then the board will come out of the case almost effortlessly. It's really huge, it's hard to see through the camera, but the size of this motherboard is impressive. Now it's finally time for some actions with the case. I will just make some marks where I need to drill and change the drill bit for these small screws that will fit the screwdriver. At first I wanted to put a couple of rusty bolts on the case, but unfortunately I couldn't find the right size, so I clamped the plate to the case with the clumps after calibrating it so that the side cover could close. I began drilling, it was too small, a larger hole was needed, an even bigger hole. Well, now I can screw it. In general, I decided to drill only two holes in the case, as the plate holds quite well on the screws. I drilled the second hole a bit bigger, now I will show you why. Removing the clumps and putting the side cover back on, I discovered that it doesn't stand up all the way. I needed to slightly loosen the screw. Well, now the cover is in place and there is no gap. So this is what we have. Yes, the bottom is still crooked and there are some troubles with the rivets on the left side, but now the computer at least can stand confidently on the floor. It's only left to assemble it. It's actually easier to wind up this anaconda of wires than to unwind it. I'm tired of building computers, let it build it itself. Cable management, what am I going to do about it? Oh, that's better. Hey, where did you put the disk drive? And am I supposed to connect the GPU? Alright, I will connect it by myself, I've already gotten used to it. God, why do the smallest connectors sit so tight here? You can break your fingers while pulling them out. I'll better use pliers. Well, in general, the computer is ready. 
As for the temperatures, the CPU clearly become cooler, the fans now feel more relaxed, but you can still barbecue on this memory. I also tried to somehow speed up this low frequency CPU. I used setFSB program and overclocked seem to be applied, but as soon as I rebooted the computer, memory errors appeared, that is, the CPU is overclocked but not the memory, and it's not possible to overclock them separately. I also tried to change the memory timings through Windows, but no normal apps want to work with this hardware. So we will test it in stock. Last time I started with the Fallout 4, and as you can see there is hardly any difference between the systems. I thought there would be at least some gain. But it turns out for this game there is almost no point in changing CPUs. It kind of makes me sad, maybe in other game, for example Killing Floor, we will see some gain. I'm not sure, but the game feels smoother in terms of FPS we don't see any gain. Maybe it's because of the different locations. DayZ clearly become much smoother, but it's still barely playable. As you can see, the load on the GPU has grown, and only now we can see some sense in this meaningless upgrade. Witcher, in terms of frame rate, remained same, but the game become a little bit more stable. It's hard to play, but possible. PUBG, I didn't feel any increase in performance. The game as it logs and still logs. Also, last time I forgot to say or either to show what latency on this hardware in this game. Look, I sharply shake the mouse on the mat, then stop and look at the screen, but the character is still twitching. Here is another time. And again. I think you saw and understood. Then, as before, I decided to run Rust. On the first attempt to enter the server, I was thrown out. But now, I become much more persistent. Since the game now is on SSD, loading times are shorter. As you can see, playing Rust on this hardware is still very uncomfortable, but if the graphics is lowered, the game is still unplayable, not just because of the low FPS. Let me now show you a couple of games that run better on this hardware, for example, the old good Left 4 Dead 2 runs at 60 frames per second on ultra settings. Of course, there are occasional drops to 40 in hard sense, but still, it is extremely rare. Wolfenstein, on the maximum graphics settings, can be played, the game is very well optimized, even on a such old hardware it works quite well. Of course, if you move the mouse quickly, the frame rate will be unstable, but still it's possible to complete and to play the game. Uh, so here we have the performance of the box that costs around 220 bucks, and you can even uh, buy a cheaper GPU because it's still getting bottlenecked with the CPU, so it's it just don't need a Rex 580. I don't think that is a really good idea to buy something like that, but still, thank you for watching.